Hey guys, James Harkins here again for the second installment of Money Master the Game. We're going into chapter two today. Uh, I did chapter one already. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's a short video. I'm trying to keep all these under like five minutes. And by, just to quickly go over it, basically it was just the idea of getting started, realizing that you've got to become an investor in the economy. you got to invest your money so that you can work no longer work for a living you're gonna have your money work for you so it's all about making that decision to becoming an investor deciding how much you're gonna put aside every week and then just doing it investing it and then slowly over time giving some time compounding interest boom income stream for life and you're financially free so chapter one was just all about making that decision chapter two is okay now that you're ready now that you're ready to get into the game you gotta figure out you gotta know some of the rules of the game and there's there's a lot of myths around finances and this whole chapter is about dispelling those myths there's a lot of myths that get people in trouble because um, because they believe these things and they cost you a lot of money if you believe these things so let's get started on those so the book goes over nine of these myths and I'm not gonna go over all of them I'm gonna try to summarize them for you so we can keep it short but the main ones I want to start with is the mutual fund and a lot of people are gonna I may upset a lot of people with this, but again, don't shoot the messenger. This is the book. This is not coming from me. This isn't even coming from Tony Robbins. This is coming from the top 50 financial investors in the world. And they are all against the mutual fund. And the reason is that in a mutual fund, you are paying somebody to invest your money and they're actively managing it and they're trying to outperform the market. The unfortunate reality of the mutual fund is that 96% of mutual funds do not outperform the market. So what that means is you're better off investing in something like an index fund. An index fund is something like, if you've ever heard of the S&P 500, it's where they take, they take the top 500 companies and then they allow you to invest in all 500 of them. And you don't have to, you know, you're not paying anyone to actively manage it and change it all the time. They've just got it set up and you can invest in it. And 96% of mutual funds can't outperform that. Just this unmanaged index is outperforming all these, all these mutual funds. So not only is it outperforming most of them, but you're also getting a lot lower fees. So with mutual funds, you're paying these people to manage them, and so they're charging you fees for that. So maybe 2 3%, whereas investing in index fund is usually less than 1% to do. And just a quick note, it may not sound like a lot of money, or a lot of percentage, like you're paying one, two, three percent. You gotta keep in mind this is over a long period of time. So a lot of you guys getting started, you know, this is 20, 30, 40 years down the road. And if you're paying an extra two, three percent over that amount of time, just like your money is compounding, your fees are compounding just as well. So at the end of the day, this simple step of saving you one, two, three percent literally can save you hundreds of thousands of dollars in the long run. So be very careful about mutual funds. Avoid them at all costs unless you really know what you're doing. My guess is, though, for most of you, just stick with index funds and you'll be safe. So the next thing I want to get into is just the, four, the 401k. A lot of people are going to be using 401ks. That's a great thing. You just have to, again, you have to be very clear on the fees that you're being charged. So with the 401k, you have somebody that's, you know, that's managing your 401k. And you can tell them to invest it in this index fund or that mutual fund or whatever it is, but they're also charging you a fee. You've got to make sure that fee is less than 1%. Ideally, 1.5 is the most. If it's anything higher than that, you've really got to do something about it. Uh, I'm going to put a link below this video. There is something that can check your 401k to see what kind of fees you're getting charged. And it can kind of help you out. If you're getting charged too high, you can switch over to a new 401k. Or you can, if you're through your employer, you can talk to your employer, you know, and, and just let them know, hey, this is this is ridiculous. And, you know, a lot of them just aren't even aware because they're just buying, you know, just some standard 401k off the shelf. You let them know you could be saving yourself and all of your fellow employees a whole lot of money in the long run. Uh, the last few myths, um, one of them, this is very prevalent. Most people believe in order to get a high return on your money, you have to take a high risk with your money and if you look at the people who are the best of the best in the world that's just simply not the case the top guys the like the Warren Buffett's etc these guys are not taking huge risks to get their huge rewards they're experts at finding the these various investments 
that will give them a large return for a very small amount of risk. These top guys, they're risking four or five cents for every dollar of upside uh, in their investments. And, that's and the last one is simply the lies that we tell ourselves. That's the last myth. And this is kind of getting out of the financial realm and kind of into the Tony Robbins specialty, the, the mental stuff. Um, and it's, it's really interesting stuff, but just to summarize it, it's basically in our head, we all have ideas and beliefs about how much money we should have or what money means and all this stuff. And it's important that you realize what those things are because they're affecting your decisions with your finances. So for example, a lot of people, myself included, I used to believe rich people were greedy and selfish and all these kind of neg I had all these negative associations to wealthy people. And the problem with that is that subconsciously, even if you're not aware of it, you are not going to allow yourself to become wealthy if you believe all these negative things about wealth. You know, you may start off really well and then you'll get reach a certain point and you'll start to get uneasy and you may you won't even realize why. And it's because you have all these negative associations and you believe that rich people are, are you know, mean and nasty and you don't want to become a person who would be like that. So just being aware of things like that, a lot of people also believe that they're not worthy of being rich. It's a huge one. Being aware of that and then changing it because if you don't change that, you're, ne you're just never going to get there. You're never going to allow yourself mentally to get to where you need to go or to where you want to go. Okay, guys, that's it. I mean, this is a, a relatively lightweight chapter. It's just about kind of laying the, the groundwork, some just kind of hurdles that you need to be aware of before you get started. Again, mutual funds, avoid them at all costs. Stick with index funds. Make sure your 401k is not charging you too high fees. Um, avoid risky investments. It's not about high risk. It's about low risk versus high reward. And then, of course, make sure you're telling yourself the right story in your head. Because if you don't have the right beliefs, you're not going to let yourself get there. Okay? So next week, Chapter 3, is when it really starts to get deep. That's when where kind of the rubber meets the road, as they say. And so that's when it's going to get real exciting. So... Join me again next week. Thanks for listening, guys. I wish you all the best.